Hello and welcome to our community forum. Today we have a wonderful community Arthur with us. Take a look. We have Chanel McLeod with us today. Hello Chanel. Hello, how are you? I'm good, good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I, I've been watching you <laughs> on the internet and you do so much. So please tell the audience a little bit about yourself. So I'm Chanel McLeod. I'm known as the teacher wellness guru. I was a teacher for many years. Um, I taught middle school in Euclid and St. Jerome. And I also was a GED instructor for many years. And one of the things that I noticed is there was just this gap where there wasn't a lot of professional development for teachers about their wellness. And when you're teaching children, you need to be as well as possible in every way not just your physical and mental health, but your professional health, intellectual, oh, financial. Wow. So there's oh. a lot when it comes down to, you know, wellness and what that means. So I really geared a lot of what I do to wellness, but I inspire people, you know, but teachers have a special place in my heart. Um, I left the classroom in 2017, 2018 school year, at the end of the school year, and I knew that what I wanted to do, there's no job for, you know, <laughs> inspiring teachers, yeah. inspiring people in the school district. So I just stepped out on faith and became the CEO of Professional Inspiration full time. And, you know, it's been a wonderful ride. It's been a journey yes. for sure. But along the way, um, I wrote letters from a healing heart. And, uh, and because I honestly 100% believe the first step to success is healing. Yeah. Oh, I really like that. They're successful with the money and the car, but in here, you know, your heart is not right or your soul doesn't feel right or there's some healing that needs to be done. I honestly 100% believe, as I mentioned before, that, you know, people want to be successful. Yes. You know, they want the big business. They want the big job with the corner office. The big house, the, the nice car, yes. the nice jewelry, yes. the nice clothes. Yes. They want it all. The great relationship. Let's not forget the relationship. Great, great marriage, whatever. Yes. But the first step, in my experience, because I've been through some things, the first step to all of those things is healing. You have to heal. You have to Think about the things that you may have gone through when you were a little child on up and really heal. Because if not, you're going to, it's going to be an obstacle somewhere along the line. And we see that a lot with our actors and actresses, mm -hmm. especially now. And even when mental health uh, starts to kick in, those type of problems. Absolutely. Even when you can see it. And a lot of it stems from childhood. Absolutely. Okay. Tell us a little bit about this <laughs> wonderful <laughs> book letters from a healing heart this book was on my spirit for years when i say i mean years <laughs> and it was like you need to write this book i've always used writing as a way to heal as a way to feel better mm -hmm. i could be going through something but once i write i just feel better and the research shows that writing is cathartic yes. writing expressive writing especially it helps to release stress it reduces anxiety you know all the things that we want to do in a healthy way Correct. because the thing is we try to find a way to relieve our stress and sometimes we pick up negative or bad habits along the way and you know we we try to cope with life and the challenges of life by doing things that aren't so healthy but writing is that healthy way you know, writing is a healthy way, and those pages don't judge you. They don't interrupt you. Correct. <laughs> they don't say, but hold up, let me tell you what I went through, you know? Because I did this, you know, the pages are just a wonderful friend, uh, a wonderful friend to me. And I kind of wanted to introduce that friend to everybody else and how writing has just been such a beautiful and healing place for me. So these letters that I wrote, you know, as a teacher, I always think about modeling. You yes. want to model for people. Mm -hmm. So I could say, okay, this is a journal. You know, you should write some letters of healing in this journal. This is how, you know, but I wrote my own letters. And in writing those letters, I made sure to put things that I had been through. So people could see, this is authentic. She's not just saying, write letters of healing. She's really showing her letters of healing. 
And so I wrote a letter to myself when I was a little girl, you know, just how I felt about myself. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that had kind of uh, made me feel unworthy. You know, yes. what kids used to say about me. I always worked on my weight, you know, mm -hmm. uh, trying to lose weight. I was a, you know, a chubbier child and mm -hmm. people call me names and things like that. And those are things that I took into my spirit as true. And yes. that it made me feel less worthy of a person. And as I grew up, I accepted things that I shouldn't have accepted because I felt like, oh, you know, somewhere in me, there was still this place that needed to be healed that I was beautiful and I'm worthy, mm -hmm. you know? But I didn't feel 100% that way. Correct. I wrote a letter to myself as a little girl. I wrote a letter to Shane. A lot of people are, you know, feeling shame about things that they've gone through or things that they did. They haven't forgiven themselves. I like that. Now, at some point, mm -hmm. um, when we're examining ourselves mm -hmm. from the inside out, low self-esteem yes. plays a role. And at some point in everybody's life, they're gonna their self-esteem is going to be low. Mm -hmm. But it's overcoming that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It, can you talk a little bit about? Yeah, I think one of the things telling yourself the truth and also what is truth versus belief okay you okay. know some things we just believe but that doesn't mean it's true we, we get it twisted we get it twisted <laughs> okay so you think because you're overweight that you're ugly okay that's what you believe but that's not that's true truth. okay gotcha. you know so like switching up your mindset really taking a different look at how you think and how your thoughts have kind of created mm -hmm. your life because if you think I'm not good enough to get this job, that's for this type of person or that type of person, mm -hmm. and now I'm not that type of person. Okay, well that's what you believe, and then you're pigeonholing yourself based off of your own feelings about yourself and your self worth. Mm -hmm. But if you really go back and be honest, when I went through many things, including divorce, I had to set everything on the table. Mm -hmm. I had to spread everything out. Yeah. Yes. You know, because I said, I'm not going to go through this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to heal. And for you to heal, you have to tell the truth. That's hard. That, that's very you know, hard to look in, look in the mirror, look at yourself and say, wow, this is what's really going on with me. Right. And I like that, what you said, because at one time I was looking for a job and I was reading all this information mm -hmm. talking about where what's in style, mm -hmm. a black and white suit, a, a, um, a dark blue navy yeah. suit, a white shirt and everything. So my self-esteem was not where it needed to be. So in order for me to get where I needed to be, I wore red to a job. <laughs> so hey, I'm the stuff. You can't tell me anything. Yeah. And I think I might have had a red flower or something. And when I walked in the interview, the person that interviewed me said, wow, <laughs> you look great. Nobody has ever yeah. come to an interview in bright red. Now, keep in mind, I was offered the job, but the hours, I could not manage right. the hours. Right. But I thought to myself after that, just changing my friend yes. and mine, doing something a little extra to yeah. boost my low self-esteem <laughs> that day, got me an opportunity to perhaps have a job that otherwise I would not have right. gotten. Right, and being comfortable enough to be you. I mean, that's one of the things that, um, again, excels you to success, is your individuality. Okay. You have been blessed. Every person has been blessed to be their own individual. There is nobody, or nor will there ever be another you, another me, another you out there. You know, you know there is nobody. So that's powerful. That there is powerful. Is. You know, there's power in that. There's a power in standing in that and yes. in embracing that. You know that I am my only me. And so what will that be? And as you said, when you decided, you know what? I'm going to do it my way. Mm -hmm. And then it allowed you to shine. Yes. So I think that that's, you know, that's a huge part of just developing and healing is being comfortable with who you are. That doesn't mean that you don't have things to grow because sometimes when I say that, people will say like, yeah, because I'm like this and I don't care what nobody says. Yeah. No. Yeah. 
I'm not saying that you hurting feelings and you are, you know, disrespecting people and things like that. And you know, that's different because you can be who you are and not impose on who someone else is. Correct, correct. You can also be who you are and accept your quirkiness. Yes. I, I often tell people, hey, I'm like this, this, and this, and, and I'm a little quirky. You know, <laughs> what do you mean? Well, you're a slow <laughs> But anyway, accepting and embracing that you're not perfect. That's your quirk. You might have some funny ways. You might like to fold your bread before you put the peanut butter on. You know what I mean? Just little things to make you stand out and make you unique. Yes. So I, I really appreciate that information. I'm getting hyped up. What can, what can I do after this video, uh, Chanel McLeod? You truly are a guru and an inspiration. Um, the book is easy reading. Most of it is a journal because I wanted people, again, to have the letters that I wrote. Again, I wrote a letter to my father, I wrote a letter to my mother. My, my father was not in my life. And that's something a lot of people deal with. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't grow up with my father. I have forgiven him. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with it, you know, but I realized in becoming a woman, I, for the longest time, I thought, it didn't impact me at all uh -huh. because my mother was amazing. She yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And she raised me up in a, such a wonderful way and I had the support of my family. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I'm good. You know, I'm good. <laughs> but then one thing that I realized is I didn't or hadn't had an experience of what it was like to be loved by a man, you know, to, to protect you, provide for you. Yes. So I didn't know what that was like. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to figure it out as a woman, mm -hmm. you know, at, in relationships and just not really understanding. I saw my mother work hard. Yes. So I'm working hard. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was like, you don't have to be, you're not supposed to be a single mom when you're married, <laughs> you know? But just having that idea of still, you know, not quite understanding and embracing what is, what, that what I wanted was possible. And what yes. I felt like, it could be yes. that partnership because I hadn't yes. witnessed that in that way. So I'm like, wow, it did impact me. Not in the way that I would, you know, that maybe stereotypically we think, mm -hmm. but it did impact me in a way that I hadn't experienced or seen uh, a model of a relationship in a way that, that could help me because I did know that I wanted to be married or wanted to mm -hmm. be in a relationship in my life, mm -hmm. but what would that look like for me? Yeah. You know, and is that, you know, what is that, is that possible? When you see how it's supposed to right. be versus how it's been or what right. you accepted. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Not only do you have to forgive yourself, but forgive others. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is also a crucial part of growing and Absolutely. looking inside yourself. Absolutely, because one of the biggest things that we realize is Sometimes when people say think forgiveness, they think that, oh, you're just letting that person off the hook. Correct. You know, like, that person did something bad to me, and I'm not going to ever, 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 ever forgive <laughs> them for what they did. But forgiveness is not saying that what you did was okay. Forgiveness is saying what you did was not okay, but I'm not dwelling in that place anymore. Okay. And I'm moving on. Okay. I you like know, that. I'm, I like I'm that. moving on. Forgiveness doesn't mean we have to sit and chat and you mm -hmm. coming to dinner. Mm -hmm. You can forgive people from that a distance. Goes from a very long distance. <laughs> it's, you know, so I think that sometimes when people think forgive, they think that I'm saying it's okay. I condone your behavior. No, it's saying that I, I'm not. I'm not living in that place. I'm releasing myself from that thing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm releasing myself from what happened. I'm surviving. I'm not being a victim of that. I'm putting a new stamp on what this is to me. You claiming it in a different way. In a different. Yeah, way. I'm reclaiming that experience in a different way for me. So it's done and over with. How you decide, you know, some people do reconcile, yes. you know, that, that, but that's their choice. Correct. Right? But I, right. you know, often have to tell people that forgiveness doesn't mean that now that person's at your dinner table. Correct. <laughs> I 
like that. Yeah. You know, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule yeah. to share your book and share a part of yourself with us. Oh. And I truly have enjoyed talking to you, Guru. <laughs> and um, in the future, we would love to have you back. I would love to be back. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah. So you can find Letters from a Healing Heart here at our East Cleveland Public Library on the shelf. Thank you for supporting your community library, and thank you, Chanel. Thank you.